Today, we're going on an exciting adventure across Europe where something big is happening. What do you get when you mix innovation, determination, and a dash of madness? Europe's newest mega tunnel. That's what. Get ready to discover the amazing story of this mega tunnel that will change the way we travel. But can a shortcut to the continent be both a boon for commuters and a bane for the natural world? Good question, though. Let's unravel this gigantic construction. Imagine a peaceful holiday island in the Baltic Sea. Well, it's about to undergo a massive transformation. Zoom out for a moment and see the whole picture. The Trans-European Transport Network is like a giant web connecting different places in Europe. It's made up of roads, railways, and shipping lanes that bring people together. But wait, why is there such a huge detour? As we head north, through Germany, things start to get a bit strange. Instead of a direct route to Sweden, we end up taking a 150-kilometer loop around Denmark. That's a long way to go. And here's the reason for the detour, the Feymarn Belt. It's a 20-kilometer stretch of water standing between Germany and Denmark like a big barrier. But let's not be too hard on the Feymarn Belt. Denmark has something awesome, the Orison Bridge. It's a beautiful bridge connecting Denmark to a city in Sweden called Malmo, a real masterpiece of engineering. Inspired by the Orison Bridge, Sweden had a fantastic idea. They thought, why not build a mega tunnel under the Feymarn Belt? And so, a bold plan was set in motion. The Swedish government saw a shortcut through the Feymarn Belt and made a deal with Denmark. Sweden said, we'll help build the Orison Bridge if you consider making a fixed link at the Feymarn Belt. Surprisingly, it wasn't such a crazy suggestion. Long ago, people talked about a railway between Hamburg and Copenhagen called the Vogelfluglini, or Bird Flight Line. But nothing much happened until the 1960s when they built a bridge to cross Feymarn Sound getting trains close to the water's edge. Finally, Sweden said, enough is enough. In 2008, Denmark and Germany agreed to build the Feymarn Belt Fixed Link. It would have a motorway and two rail lines for speedy trains and cargo. Denmark would pay the bill and collect toll fares, while Germany would improve the route on its side. This project would be a game changer. The Hamburg to Copenhagen route would become a high-speed road and rail route, cutting a massive detour from the ScanMed corridor. Europe's transport network would be transformed. The only catch? Water. Everyone agreed a bridge was the way to go. Denmark was good at building bridges, just like the Orison Bridge. So, they planned a three-kilometer-long cable-stayed bridge, tall enough for ships to pass under, but the Feymarn Belt is still pretty awkward. It's just under 20 kilometers wide, surprisingly deep in places, and the soil conditions aren't great for building on. Building a bridge over the lengthy Feymarn Belt seemed like a massive challenge. The spans needed to be over 700 meters, longer than any road and rail bridge ever constructed. The plan was to have three enormous towers, each nearly 300 meters tall, but constructing their foundations at sea in depths up to 25 meters with poor soil conditions and a busy shipping lane proved to be a nightmare for engineers. After careful consideration, the bridge idea was scrapped and they looked underground. The Feymarn Belt was just right for a board tunnel. Board tunnels are great because they don't disturb anything above ground, making them ideal for preserving delicate ecosystems like Feymarn. Though they can be expensive, the longer the tunnel, the more cost-effective they become. However, they hit another obstacle when considering board tunnels. These tunnels are dug by a tunnel boring machine also called TBM. Typically, TBMs create tunnels around 7 meters wide, perfect for underground railways, with one track per tunnel. But Feymarn needed a railway, motorway, and an access tunnel. This meant boring five separate tunnels, which would cost five times as much. But wait, there's more. Trains rely on wheels made of steel, which don't provide much traction. On flat tracks, that's great for speed and efficiency. However, going uphill becomes a challenge. A typical mainline train can only climb upwards by 2.5% or 1 in 40. So for every 40 meters of track, the train can only move up 1 meter. And the Feymarn Belt is about 40 meters deep at its deepest point, and any board tunnel would have to sit at least 10 meters below that. Now, you might say, hey, why not build a bridge? Well, that idea is a big no, too. So, what's left? Introducing the Immersed Tube Tunnel, or IMT, the night in shining concrete. Unlike boring through soil, IMTs are like giant Lego pieces made of prefabricated concrete. No more boring through soil. These are neatly sealed together underwater like puzzle pieces, and a tunnel will appear like magic. It's perfect for the Feymarn Belt because it's shallower, cheaper, and no shipping nightmares once it's done. But, as they say, there's always a catch. IMTs are usually used for shorter stretches, like rivers and harbors. Not for Feymarn Tunnel, oh no. This one's five times longer than the longest IMT in the world. So, how do you tackle such a colossal task? Welcome to the colossal construction site at Roadbaven, 
on the Danish side, where Femern AS, the Danish state-owned company, takes charge. It's so massive that building the work area alone took two years. And the real star is the humongous factory, one of the biggest ever in Denmark, covering half a million square meters. That's around 200 football pitches. Why so huge, you ask? Well, they need space for the production lines that churn out a whopping 89 concrete tunnel elements, each 220 meters long, 12 meters high, and 40 meters wide. These factories will be working non-stop 24-7 for a jaw-dropping three and a half years. When work begins on January 1, 2021, aggregates and materials will be delivered to the purpose-built work harbor, and then they'll take a magical ride on conveyor belts to the factories. There, like puzzle pieces, the elements will be cast in nine smaller segments, each taking a whopping 36 hours to create. Once a complete tunnel element is constructed, it will get rolled out of the factory and taken to a huge dry dock, where it then gets floated and taken out to sea where the tunnel trench is dug. Oh, the suspense! Massive ballast tanks are flooded to sink the 73,000-ton concrete tunnel elements to the ocean floor. Winches, like gentle guides, help them reach their targets with an impressive 15-millimeter accuracy. It's like threading a needle underwater. Once all the elements are in place, the trench is backfilled and the tunnel is covered in gravel to protect it at which point nature takes over and eventually covers the gravel bed with sand. But wait, we're not done yet. Now comes the small challenge of laying a motorway and railway through this underwater wonderland. Not to worry, though. The tunnel will be equipped with all the bells and whistles, ventilation, support, and surveillance systems ready to welcome thousands of cars and hundreds of trains every day. Time for some financial talk. This massive project comes with a hefty price tag, a whopping $7.5 billion. But fear not, Half a billion dollars are covered by European Union subsidies, and the rest is a loan from the Danish state, meaning Danish taxpayers are off the hook. This tunnel is no ordinary project. It's a money-making machine. Charging cars around the same as a ferry ride, it's expecting to generate a staggering $4 billion in profit during its first 50 years of operation. Ah, but as with any grand project, there's a twist in the tale. Meet the fierce campaigners from the German Action Bundes gegen ein Feste Femarnebelt Kirung, also known as AGFF, the action group against the Femarn Belt Fixed Link. They've been fighting tooth and nail for a decade to halt the construction of any permanent crossing. Femarn AS tries to make up for the upcoming problems by claiming that once the tunnel's done, it'll be a green corridor, a shortcut of 160 kilometers. Goodbye air traffic, hello eco-friendly freight trains. They're even trying to use 100% renewable energy for construction. At least they're making some effort, right? Opposition groups like AGFF have legit concerns, though. Living near such a colossal construction project can be nail-biting, but hey, building infrastructure is inevitable, guys. We can't just stop building stuff altogether. So the project team is trying to keep people happy. Most of the heavy lifting is on the Danish side, where fewer people live. They're building new habitats to make up for the land they're using. Balance is key. But trust me, once it's up and running in the mid of 2029, people will forget the controversies. The tunnel is going to impact millions of people across Europe for decades. But you know what Femern AS said? My hope is just that a year after it opens, no one can remember that it was not there. Europe's mega tunnel is undoubtedly a true marvel of engineering. But what happens when grand projects face failure? Join us in our next video titled Why Shanghai Tower Failed.